Welcome to St. Croix Church. We're about two months into social isolation. I'm continuing the study on James and we're at the last part of chapter three. I'll read it in the NRSB. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, don't be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom doesn't come down from above, but it's earthy, earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. And uh, it, it's verses 13 to 18. I'm going to read just the last little bit, maybe verse 16 to 18 in the message. I, I like this. Whenever you're trying to look better than others or get the better of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at the other's throats. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life and it's characterized by getting along with others. It's gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings, not hot one day, cold the next, not two-faced. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoy its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. And um, here's just a group, bunch of thoughts that I have about this passage. Um, we're tempted to read all of the material in the New Testament as though it's um, advice uh, for, for us as individuals. We're, we're tempted to read it as though um, the whole thing is about our own spiritual pilgrimage. But very often these letters, and in this case, I think for sure, these letters are written to communities and they're really meant to help the community figure out how to, how to build something beautiful. Um, my second thought is that uh, the context of this, I suppose we should say something about it, is the, the beginning of chapter three that I talked about last time was all about speech, the way that the speech shows what's actually inside of our, of our hearts. And, um, and so what James wants is a transformation so that people are actually speaking beautiful things to each other, creating belonging in others. Um, and, and it's almost as though our speech can be the thing that builds belonging um, instead of the thing that tears the community apart. But in this passage, um, James wants to take that one step further. And he wants to say that uh, the wisdom from above is the capacity to do the hard work to build community. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's full of, of people who are willing to, uh, to, to not brush difficult things away, but to face them, but to do it with love and honor for the others in such a way that the community is actually cemented together. The real wisdom from God uh, cements, cements the community, builds the community. It's like the mortar to the bricks. Um, third thought. In this passage, James wants people to understand uh, that their agendas, their pet projects, their favorite ideas or doctrines have the capacity to destroy the nascent community. Um, to explain this, Peter Rollins, an Irish philosopher, spoke at the university here once and uh, did a brilliant job. And, and I'll never forget, I hope I never forget something that he said. He, he took Galatians 3.28, which says that in Christ there is no Jew nor Greek, no uh, slave nor free, no male nor female, um, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, and, uh, all, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an incredible universal principle that entering into this new vision that Jesus has, entering into the life of Jesus, participating with God's spirit, we're, we're, we're taking a step away from the old categories. Um, no longer am I defined by my ethnicity or by my economic status or by my gender or by my, my orientation. Um, I am now coming into the new community where everyone comes uh, welcomed by God. Peter Rollins gave us this, this thinking, and then he said, doesn't it go beautifully with the parable of the, of the wedding banquet in Matthew? 
Jesus tells a story about how the people that are invited to a wedding banquet don't come. And so the servants of the king are sent out into the highways and the byways to bring everyone back. Uh, all the people that wouldn't have thought that they'd be welcome at the king's palace. And they come and there's a great feast and banquet and everything's going so well. And then they notice that there's somebody who's not in a wedding garment. And, uh, and, and the king says, well, if he's, he's, not taking, he's not taking this seriously, cast him out. And, and so um, what does it mean? Peter, Peter said, it's, it's as though you can't give up your primary status. You can't give up the fact that you are white or, or anything else. You can't give up the fact that you are a man or anything else. You can't give up the fact that you're straight or anything else. It's, it's, it's like um, it, it's, it's, you can't give up the fact that you have some wealth behind you or anything else. So in, other, in other words, whatever your particular way of holding on to your identity is, you've got to let that go to come into the new community. And if you're not willing to do it, but you still think that you're better than other people, then you actually can't be a healthy part of the new community. You'll be a destroyer of it. And so this is ironic and also tragic because in, in my experience, I, I think people create the exact thing that God doesn't want um, very often at church, create more divisions than God would do. And I, and I think that they, they do it with the best intentions in the world, but I think that they're actually uh, hurting what God is trying to build. So um, I've, uh, yeah, I've paraphrased this passage myself. Here's my paraphrase. Who is wise and intelligent or understanding among you? Let him or her show it by the beautiful upturning of their works, in the restrained power, the gentleness of wisdom. But if you're having bitter, acrid heat in your heart, don't boast about it and effectively lie against the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, psychological, demonic. For where heat and factions exist, you will have instability in every worthless event or practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, innocent, then peaceful, gentle, mild, reasonable in the sense of being willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a spirit of judging, without pretense and sincere. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who are making peace. So uh, just to make the point again, ironic and tragic. I think a serious reading of the text would lead you to the conclusion that those who create factions in community and stand by them without softening their position are actually the people who, while thinking that they're representing God's wisdom, are actually representing something much lower, earthly, psychological, demonic, people who can gently work together, tear down barriers, cover everything in mercy, are closer to the heart of God. So that's it for this week. Oh, two more things. Just I'll just throw them in. The word Sophia, the word wisdom is used several times in this passage. It's the thing that the wisdom from God, it's important to say it's, it's Sophia, it's a feminine word. God's wisdom comes to us uh, full of the characteristics that we associate with femininity. Um, and, and I think we're seeing in some of the best leaders around the world now, like Jacinda Ardern, like uh, Angela Merkel. Um, we're seeing uh, qualities of collegiality and nurture, and, uh, and, and uh, there's a, there is a feminine wisdom that we all desperately need. Um, second thought, uh, it talks about a wisdom that comes from above, and the word in Greek is an anothen. And um, there's, this word shows up 13 times in the New Testament. In, in 12 of those times, it's translated from above. In John chapter 3, it's translated in the Nicodemus conversation as again. It shouldn't be. Um, this gives people the impression that you make some kind of a decision for Christ you make some kind of, a, of a, a decision, and then your status has been changed with God. But it's not saying that. It's talking about um, those that are born from above. It's those that are learning how to participate in these things that God desires for the transformation of the soul and the transformation of the community. Okay, that's really it this time. <laughs> Bye now.